I really... I'm not going to spend hours playing the game over and over again and mastering all the moves, but I do play and generate a lot of games. And you can see from my massive collection that's pretty true. But I'm nothing like what they described in that little... in that final paragraph. I don't just stay inside. I don't just eat Cheetos all day. I don't drink... I don't drink anything too outrageous. I just I just play games for the fun of it. Again, it's it's stereotypes. That's what that blog is for. To, Pretty much to that stereotype is her bashing on everyone. And most people, if you actually see me, they would consider, well, I'm a hardcore gamer. No, not really. I go out. I go outside. I have a job. I literally spend time with my friends. I don't have to play games all the time. But I do them for fun. I wash my car. I look for clubs and activities to join. I go out for walks. I go and listen to podcasts and take it with me. Uh, I, but I can understand partially of where she is coming from because there are some people who just hate this game outright and they're willing to attack it. And it's like, they do have to calm down because it is just a game. And at the same time, they have been riled up. So I'm not... I'm not Virtually, uh, there's pros and cons to this argument. I know, but there's not, it's not meant to subvert anything. It's not meant to change or to die down one part of the conversation. Uh, again, like, there are angry fans who just dislike every video they see because they don't like the change, the sight of it. I personally don't like the response. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now that we're done picking apart some self-esteem and insecurity issues from journalists who are obsessed with Dante's hair, let's talk about one more party into the mix. We're going to talk Hideki Kamiya this time. Uh, a lot of people, ever since this damn game was announced, have been bugging him to play it. I mean, to do more things than just take a look at it. To play it, to ask about it, to make a new game in Ninja Theory stead. And you know what the same response has been? I have no control over new DMC, stop asking me. All right? Pete, for the last two, three years, people have been bugging him about it, and I completely understand where he's coming from. But now, he's all excited, and he's taking so much revenge and trolling pleasure into this that a lot of people have seen his tweets up on tw uh, Twitter, and th they're not meant to be taken seriously. I personally don't think so. Uh, I think he's just using it as a way to vent without looking like a complete asshole, because there was this little feud and spat between Kotaku and Kamiya. You see, it started out when Hideki wrote up on Twitter, uh, PC idiots, I'll block them, something like that. He basically just does not have a lot of emphasis on PC gaming. Kotaku, instead, Kotaku as a way of fighting back, wrote an art article about him and said, entitled it, The Guy Who Made Bayonetta Is Clueless About PC Gaming. I don't know if HK feels spite over it, or because it just seems like there's this argument uh, transpiring from them. And now Kotaku is actually trying to highlight his comments and get clicks on their site and make him look good for some strange reason. It's not a conspiracy thing. It's just two stupid people acting even more confused. And it's like, I like HK. I don't think he's really stupid. I just think... I think there's a misunderstanding here that not a lot of people can kind of level down to. Like, they're not being level-headed. Like, again, I play PC games, I think you should acknowledge it, but I'm not going to call him an asshole or whatever. I, I think it just might be the translation, because he doesn't speak English, to the best of my in knowledge and insight here, because most of what he types on Twitter is in Japanese, and then he translates it to English or something. Because I've asked him a few questions myself, and I know how not to piss someone off like that. No matter who you are, even if you're new to Twitter, even if you just joined, if you ask him a question about the new DMC, he'll he'll send you to a tweet in which he has already uh, blown off steam by typing in all caps and sort of seemingly yelling at people. Like, stop asking me one bajillion times, and it's like 24 zeros, about new DMC thing. And when you ask him about Dante in Project Exo, he just says he doesn't care. So a lot of people need to lay off and to stop asking him and to tell him to make a new game. Because I will tell you, and instead of doing it time and time again, I will say it this once. You have to talk to Capcom. Although now, I don't even know if it's possible. I think he's just trolling. In fact, a lot of his comments, I'll read them to you. I've been getting a lot of DMC tweets lately. lately. DMC is a very unique title, and I honestly hope that people enjoy it. I am also happy to see all of your messages, even though the first Devil May Cry game came out 12 years ago. That being said, DMC has been on its own path for a long time now, and asking my opinion of things is pointless. 
My only opinion is that people continue to love the Devil May Cry series, both fans and its creators alike. It's yours now. Honestly, I think he's just doing it to troll everyone, because... Uh, a lot of people have really bugged him about it. Virtually three years. Who wouldn't be trolling as revenge? Yeah, I honestly, I feel like I want to blame him, call him an asshole, call him a sellout. But that's not the kind of person I am. I'm really not. Uh, even though I am making these words explicit, my apologies. Uh, I just think, I don't. I understand your perspective completely, X-Squad. Who wouldn't want to vent through that way? It's, it, it's the best Virtually, possible... It's the, it's the best and ironic way of revenge you exactly. could possibly think it, It's of. like when Megan Fox blamed the studio and Michael Bay and called him Hitler, and then the director turned around and defended her and, and uh, spoke against some of the cast when after Transformers 2 had been released. It was hard to understand and comprehend. It probably should not even be there at all it, it shouldn't that moment should not have existed so it, it's just taking a spat between two people and bringing everyone else into the mix and trying to redirect their anger and i think maybe he's just doing this to to prevent his pr from desolating and becoming something of a of a nightmare because you know when you speak on twitter and you're a guy who works on these projects and your name is out there the media picks apart every word you say and it counts yeah that really counts pretty much i i heard like one wrong word and it could destroy you destroy you so easily yeah except if you're someone like jim sterling you can say whatever the hell you want just for the fun of it but then you get blacklisted from konami and you know what i honestly i had a lot of respect for that guy um i still do but uh i honestly can't understand someone like him who enjoys dmc devil may cry and is willing to give it a nine out of ten uh, despite a lot of the uh, questionable decisions. It's like if you're a reviewer who who act, who explicitly says you understand the community, uh, then why are you taking the time to bash it or to disclaim that you know that you were? How do I put this? It's a little hard uh, because I've seen his review. His his wording is excellent, but the part where he gives it a nine out of ten, I respectfully disagree. But I wish he wouldn't. I don't know. Like I'm glad he's not a an active asshole toward anyone who would disagree. I think at the end of the day, there are going to be opinions that don't quite match up to each other, but everyone's entitled to what they say. Mm. All right. Last yeah. thing would be, right, besides a Bayonetta's creator, are going to be the review, like, the, the end. It's going to be the launch title unit sold. It's going to be who sold this much of what. And what's going to happen then? Because honestly, I don't think this game deserves a sequel. I'm still playing it, but uh, I think it's too early to talk about Virtually. DMC 2, even though Capcom is sort of hyping it just from behind the scenes. If anything, this game should have be given... I already said this change ending in the first part of the series, that of the this three-part we've done so far, but the ending should be... or uh, add-on ending, I don't care... They can do the same thing with it for Mass Effect, but change it to the fact is Dante wakes up in a nightmare, Trish, is, Trish, Trish comes to him, asks him what the hell's wrong, and he tells her. It's a fun joke, but Capcom is standing 100% behind I it. had a horrible nightmare that she would not believe. Yeah. And that's the truth. They should change it to that just to make everyone happy. And there are some honest reviews here. I actually want to link you to all of them so you don't feel like the only voice in the woods because a lot of these reviewers they play an integral part in whether something can exist or not and i hate to say it i don't want to acknowledge them i mean i just unsubscribed from ign uh after so long of listening to them i just couldn't take them seriously anymore in fact it's like with the mainstream cbs they only tell cable you the companies i go for alternative media now yeah and like for the fact is that most of the stuff they tell you that they only tell you the positive. They don't tell you the really, really broken. Yeah. Up, messed in up in stuff. fact, like let's just say, uh, three out of five reviews, maybe four out of five. Actually, better an eight out of eight out of ten reviews. Yeah. See what I did there? Um, talk. Don't talk about the frame cap. They don't talk about the choppiness during cutscenes. They don't talk about the seemingly unresponsive camera, since you have to auto, since Dante auto aims and you have to do it manually. Uh, and also the fact is. The camera focuses on any enemy you're fighting, only the current enemy, not all the enemies around you. You have no control over its look. The, en the enemy boss, 
For instance, like the first enemy boss that we just faced, over and over again, every single time we're fighting him, his entire, almost half of his entire upper body disappears from the top of the screen! I'm actually trying to play this game like it's Devil May Cry 3, and it doesn't let me. It, it doesn't feel like an accessibility. It and is supposed certain to be moves that you could use in Devil May Cry 3 or any move at all, certain moves do not even register on your style meter at all. And we're playing on the easy, on the harder difficult mode. I'm sorry, it was... Uh, it, it's it's pretty much, it's hard to tell the difference when we're playing in uh, Nephilim mode, and it feels like we're playing on easy mode. That's just how bad it is. And you can give this to a non-hardcore gamer, and they'll still say, oh, do you guys switch this easy mode on me? Just to make fun of me or something? No. It's actually on the hard mode, the Nephilim mode. And it's just that easy. I mean, it's just that pathetically easy. Literally, it's only... To beat an enemy, you basically need a chain combo and a half. And which there, is virtually something that should have been the easiest setting. And there's no excuse not to have taunts in this game. In fact, the, the, the meaning of having a taunt is sort of to reinforce your character's narrative through your gameplay. Here, Dante is trying to be funny, but if you can't taunt, you sort of miss out on what helped you bridge between your combos. The guns are just the only thing keeping you, keeping the wheel rolling, you know? Yeah, and literally, it, that's a pretty big ball rolling because you, when you hit them, you launch them far, okay, I can see that, but there's nothing, I mean nothing to close the gap until you either get a new weapon or a new ability, that's it, there's nothing to bridge those gaps. And virtually, you have to play the you have to play the game. At a certain point, just get a decent set of skills. You know what's sad though? A lot of stupid children are gonna pick up Game Informer magazines at GameStop or wherever, and they're going to accept right in front of their face what this writer says. And by that time, DMC hey. will probably have sold millions of units for the wrong reason. In fact, they were originally supposed to go out with five million units sold, but they cut their standards in half because I mean they're gonna hide it and say uh, they they probably won't admit that a lot of people were on the edge and were, con were concerned, they never will. It's a company like that. It's a publisher. They, they they're have not too gonna, much pride. They're literally, they're not going to admit the fact is the game they made is lackluster. It doesn't really have the depth and emotion that you, ha that you got from the others. It's just... It's really more like just a beat-up game that when you fight the boss battles or, any, or really anything, it just becomes an annoyance. Not really a challenge, it's more like it just becomes annoying and okay, grating. Okay, I, I understand, but if this game succeeds, they will never go back to the original Devil May Cry universe. Uh, HK is having a field day with this, and Kotaku j might as well be. Uh, the, the only ones who are screwed are the actual gamers who pay for these copies, alright? I would like to see some changes. What would happen if IGN were reviewing this game the same day everyone else got a copy? It just makes no sense to, I mean, uh, understandably from an objective perspective, uh, yeah, try saying that three times, uh, to use g video game reviewers and scores and uh, listings of subjects like this a day or so when the launch when the launch time comes it it makes better sense to have them afterward or on the same day as everyone else because oh, people can see right through this and there's also one other option i should also mention to you this game has not even been out like uh it's only it's been out for about 3 days or so as of the time of this recording because it's been leaked predominantly i mean primarily it's been out january 15th yeah but from what i've seen in the gameplay and all that stuff, really, this game has only been out for a few hours, and I can honestly see half of that shit that they said. Okay, I'm not gonna uh, bleep myself for that. I'm sorry, but half. Okay, dude, I already, I already said fuck. I'm pretty sure like four times, and I've already said I, 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 I never used the, I never said bitch. Um, in fact, th this is my video that has come with minimal swearing, and I intend to keep it that way. I'm here to be coherent, as I actually am, but uh, a few times. Hell, I, in fact, I'm actually taking solace that we say the word fuck a lot less than the main character of a game. All right? I understand if, if they'll do it in stressful situations, but when you hear the dia dialogue, you, you can channel that. Yeah, I'm just saying is more than anything, I've 
been not been impressed. IGN has hey. not been right like for in forever. They were wrong about the Spider-Man reboot. They actually gave it a pretty low score, and a lot of people disliked their video. Uh, they also were wrong about Sonic Unleashed when that game came out and became a template for colors and generations. Right? I don't take their opinion seriously because of again they collect the green with it. Virtually is in in more ways than one. Th they they get the money. And all they give you is flops. Exactly. Like, it's just pure flops. The review isn't even a review. It's just an advertisement. It's to tell you to pick up the game they want you to. They don't want you to have an opinion. If you do, if you, and you don't agree with them, they will demonize you. They will isolate you. They will... Uh, They'll it, crucify you, pretty much. Exactly. They're, they're virtually doing what the... Ch which... If I... I don't know if we'll get in trouble with this... What the church did to pretty much everybody else who had a different opinion oh, in, the, in the 1800s. Oh, yeah. I couldn't agree more. They're, they're going to... Pretty much, they're going to take you... Bend you over and use a huge, huge stick. Okay. Okay, I that's it. I've gotten my rage out. I can play this game with a little bit of a much clearer mindset. I needed to say this, and this has gone on for far too long. This video ends here, and remember, I'm going to play the game. Don't attack me for trying it. But don't attack me and my friend here for the opinions we have, because at the end, there it's in your mind, it's in your brain, it's all up to you. All right. I feel and like just let you know. By the time you finish all our videos and probably even bother to notice that they're there, or we've already finished the game, and if you want, we'll I, probably give you a different opinion. Yeah, we'll probably give you a review, a full fledged, but I don't think so. I mean, I'm just saying what is the most. But most unlikely. likely, we're not going after this. We're just gonna go somewhere and do something to purify ourselves from. That most likely horrible from this, game. This we, evil, playing. horrible game. This this blah ha ha evil stuff. Eh, probably we'll watch a movie or something. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I've already seen Wreck It Ralph. Uh, uh, all right, uh, we're, we're we're done. We're done here. Later.